Welcome to the Zildjian Company. My name is Craigie Zildjian, and I'm the first female CEO of the family business. I'm Armin Zildjian's daughter, granddaughter to Avidus Zildjian. In so many respects, Avidus, my grandfather, was ahead of his time. For example, he continuously told me and my sister Debbie that there was no reason women couldn't be just as successful in business as men. I'm Debbie Zildjian and I'm Vice President of Human Resources. I've been officially involved with the company, I would say, now for about 25 years, but of course, as the daughter of Armin and the granddaughter of Avidus Zildjian, I've been involved in the family business my whole life. This business is the symbol-making business, the Avidus Zildjian Symbol Company. C-Y-M-B-A-L used in religious ceremonies and in Janissary bands in Turkey. My family is Armenian, but lived on the European side of Constantinople in a town named Samatya. It dates back to 1623, when Avidus I discovered the secret formula for making an incredibly clear and brilliant sounding symbol. His symbols did sound different from anything that had ever been created before. The Sultan took note, asked Avidus to join the court and to make special symbols for him. So he lived in the palace. And in 1623, the Sultan allowed Avidus to go out on his own. And so that's what we call the birth of the Zildjian Company, 1623. Zildjian. Z-I-L is Turkish or Armenian for symbol. D-J is maker, and I-A-N is an Armenian suffix for son of a, so son of a symbol maker, symbolsmith. Dating back to 1623, the Zildjian Company is the oldest family business in America. In 1972, this factory was completed. We only manufacture here in Norwell, Massachusetts. We moved into this building really to celebrate our 350th anniversary. In 1929, the business was located in Quincy, north of here. The original factory on 39 Fayette Street was very close to the train station, and that was convenient in the early days when the company was starting up. Drummers would come to Boston, take the train down to the factory. That's when the business really started to take shape. He became very, very close with Gene Cooper. Gene asked my grandfather, can you make a thinner symbol for the drum kit instead of these heavy marching symbols? Because symbols had always been heavy marching symbols. And he did, and you know, it just became really popular. Joe Jones came along, really popularized the hi-hat. And all these terms never existed before, so you had to just make a name up. Well, this, this sounds like crash symbol, so we're gonna call this a crash. And this is sort of a ride beat. That's a ride symbol. All of that terminology originated here with my grandfather and the drumming community. So this was the emergence, really, of the drum kit as we know it. And my grandfather was an important part of that. Artists love to come here, visit us, and we love to have them. One of the most fun parts about being in this business is when a drummer comes here for the first time to see how excited he or she gets. When the office was first built back in 1972, my father, who was very artistic as well as being musical, wanted the lobby to have that Middle Eastern feel, to have it recall the history of our company and our family. And that's why we have a lot of oriental rugs, the shape and design of the columns there. And of course, now we've added the, the drum kits. We started asking some of our dearest and closest endorsers if they'd be willing to donate a kit because they're just such a part of our history. So this really began with Elvin Jones's kit. And that's a very special kit because Elvin was just such a very warm, enthusiastic, happy person. And he made a number of visits here and got the biggest kick out of seeing his drum set there. And then right next to Elvin's kit, we have a replica of Ringo Starr's kit, which brings you right back to the era of the Beatles. I mean, you look at the kit and you really feel like it's 1964 all over again. And then across from them, we have more of the modern artist's kit in Travis Barker. Travis's kit features the platinum symbols, which we manufactured in the 1980s. And then right next to Travis's kit, we have Dennis Chambers, and that's just a fabulous kit. It's this bright, bright yellow, and knowing Dennis, that's his color, and it just, you know, big excitement, big, 
big kit that he used on the Santana tour. We have Buddy Rich's set here. Buddy gave that to my father as a gift. My father had to have been his biggest fan. And there's the quote there that when Buddy was dying of a brain tumor, my father said, I've got your drum set, Buddy. And Buddy turned to my father and said, Zilge, take care of it, won't you? And the next day he was gone. But we have a part of Buddy Rich here. As we do with Max Roach, he wrote a score on Pies of Quincy. Pies, a, a nickname for symbols. Quincy is, is where we used to be before we moved to Norwell. When people come here to visit, I want them to be able to learn about the history of symbols and symbol making. The process has evolved in, in a lot of ways, but in some ways it's still the very same process that it was back in 1623. For instance, the mixing of the metals is exactly the same. It's 80% copper, 20% tin, a little bit of silver here and there, but actually that's how the whole process starts, the mixing of the metals, and the secret is in how we mix those metals and what we do in that room where you see the door that says absolutely no admittance. There are only a few people that are allowed to be in that room to understand and execute the special process. My father had been planning this for a long time, which is really funny because he usually doesn't keep secrets. And just one day, he asked Debbie and, and me to accompany him to the melt room. He opened the door and he brought us in and he explained exactly what was happening in there. This was very powerful. It really tied us into the whole family history. We became the first women who had an understanding of the secret alloy. Yeah, it was, it was exciting, but at the same time, it was a bit of a burden, you think. Now I know, I have to keep this secret. So when the metal is poured into molds, and we pour it different weights, we'll have a range of castings that can be very small, two pound castings, all the way up to 22, 24 pound castings. And obviously, the smaller castings are used for the splash symbols, you know, an 8 inch, 6 inch, 10 inch splash, all the way up to 24 inch ride symbols for the larger castings. We still heat the castings the same way. We still roll them through the rolling mills the same way, but we've taken a lot of the physical labor out of it. We now have what we call an automated material handler. It goes into the oven, places the castings in, and now the castings rotate around the furnace. And that's been an improvement because now every casting that goes through the rotary is heated at the same temperature consistently. In the old box ovens, the castings in the back heated for a longer time period at a higher temperature. When you open the oven, the castings in the front part would cool off. And that would lead to a lot of breaking and inconsistency when they were rolled. The melt room, the rolling, the metal is always worked when it's hot. And it's very brittle at that point, so you have to be very careful with it. By turning the blank 90 degrees with every pass through the rollers, we develop a cross grain structure. And that enhances the sound and durability of the finished symbol. After the symbol has been cupped and quenched, the center hole is punched into it and then it's mounted on what we call a circle shear that makes the symbol then a perfect circle. And all that scrap is reused, remelted. Then you start doing the cold work. And that's where you have the hammering, the shaping, the lathing. Well, the press is when the symbol really starts to take its shape. And of course we have different dies for all different size symbols. Hammering not only work hardens the symbol, but our numerous proprietary hammer technologies produce sonics that could not be possible otherwise. The hammering options and patterns we've developed are infinite, and all of those processes take a long time to learn. And then the hammering affects the shape of the symbol, and that's very important to the tone and to the sound. We have so many different hammering techniques and hammering technology that nobody else has. And then you move on to the lathing. We do hand lathing as well as automatic lathing, and then we do combinations of both. The lathing can also help contour the symbol. It takes weight off, which affects the sound. Some symbols are lathed to a greater degree than other symbols. Some are lathed on both sides, some not lathed on the bottom. It's really a very delicate process, and I think people don't realize how long it takes to become a very good lather. And then only the more experienced lathers get to do the symbols like the K Constantinopoles. 
I think Zildjian is the only single manufacturer that has the creativity and the experience in sort of melding the old craftsmanship with the new modern technology. And that's why we're the most innovative. And I think our products, our symbols speak for that. Our instruments are very unique. Next comes the edging. The symbol's very sharp at this point. So we place the symbol on what we call the edger. This machine deburs the edge of the symbol, making it smooth. Some of our symbols are buffed, not all of the symbols are buffed, but the buffing adds to the visual effect. The A Custom line is always buffed, and it gives it that high, beautiful luster. Next comes printing. We make quality instruments, and the name must reflect the same. We say it's a nice kiss on the symbol. Then the printed symbol goes through a heating tunnel to dry the ink. And after that, the trademark is put on by a laser etching. During the laser etching process, we include a specific serial number. Because of the unique serial number, you can identify your symbol from someone else's. It also allows us to track the manufacturing of the symbol. Another Zildjian innovation. I think everybody's heard that Zildjian symbols are always tested before they go into the vault. But I think what people don't realize is throughout the process, we're always bringing the symbols into the tester for quality checks to make sure at different stages of the process, is the shape of the symbol right? Is the thickness right? Are the hammer marks the right ones? So there are various stages of testing, but ultimately the product, before it goes in to be printed, goes through a very formal testing period. Someone listens to every symbol we make before we put the Zildjian name on it and approve it. We have our legendary tester, Leon Chiapini, who's been with us for over 40 years. He is responsible now for training all the new testers. So we have testers on every shift. And we train our testers not only for sound now, but for visual effects and for shape and weight. We're not all about the drum set. We do marching, we do orchestral. In fact, we lead in those areas. And we really wanted to have a place where orchestral players could come. You need to make it easy for people to come in and pair cymbals. Our commitment is evidenced by our new Wanger sound booth. It recreates the acoustics of virtually any venue, from concert halls to outdoor arenas. We continually reinvest in the company to keep our edge. In 1995, we became the first and only percussion company to obtain ISO quality certification. Currently, we're in the midst of an $11.7 million capital plan. This speaks to our commitment to world-class quality. We really are all about quality. We have over 250,000 symbols in our vault. Certain products need more time than others. So we do have areas like the vintage symbols that have to stay in the vault longer before we release them for sale. They just need a longer time period. And it's also true that symbols over time from playing will sound better. My father said, we have the space. When we move to Norwell, I want to have a drummer's lounge. There's a kit, and you can sit down and try out your symbols at the kit. Dennis Chambers and everybody else comes in here to do this. And people are in awe of this room because of the people who have been here. The Tony Williams, the Steve Gads. We honor drummers here. We respect drumming. In 1998, we came up with what we call the American Drummers Achievement Awards. It was a way to honor Max, Louis, Roy, and Elvin. We had Steve Gadd play to honor Louis Belson. And five years later, for our 380th anniversary, we had Louis come up and honor Steve Gadd. It's one generation of drummers honoring another. So all of that just enriches us and reinforces it. And we see that we have a role within the drumming community to sort of melt the past with the present and the future. So as we approach our 400th anniversary, I'm thinking of, you know, how to perpetuate the business. Just being raised in the family, you understood that there was a stewardship and that this was a business that was really supposed to go on forever. Succession is always an issue for family businesses, and we spend a lot of time educating the next generation, bringing them into the business, that's my daughter, Emily. She really was interested in coming into the family business. 
But as she said, I want to know how to make the symbols. I don't want to work at the desk. I want to know how to make symbols. So she made a two-year commitment to enter the apprentice program under the R&D and quality manager, Paul Francis. And she's on the first shift here, 7 o'clock every morning. She knows how to hammer. She knows how to use the dies. And she's become quite an accomplished lather. But, you know, as she said, I really feel the presence of my grandfather, Armand, out there. She said it's great knowing that he did all of this and understanding what it really takes to make a symbol. And there's passion here. If you're a drummer, you can work with drummers to make sure that you get your particular sound. That's important to a musician. We have over 20 drummers working in various departments here. It's always fun when drummers get together. When they come here to try out new cymbals, you, you never know what's going to happen. Steve Smith to do the, the, the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a splash symbol. <laughs> <laughs> and drummers are very unique. They like to mix and match different sounds, whether it's electronic, acoustic, all different genres, all different voices, sounds, and they hear it in their head, and our job is to, is to take those ideas and make them into new beautiful instruments. As my father said, that's our role, to have an understanding of where music is going and to follow that so that we can produce for drummers the sounds they need. We offer the broadest range of cymbals, from the traditional K cymbals to our core product line, a or Avidus Zildjian, to symbols that our artists help us develop, like the A Custom line, which was developed with Vinnie Caliuto. And that's what we do. We make the best symbol in the world, and it's a beautiful instrument, and it's just an exciting thing to do because it's, it's music. Uh -huh. <laughs> Back in 1623, there's no way that Avidus could have imagined where we'd be today. We're well positioned for the future. The next generation of the Zildjian family is already preparing to continue the legacy of the Zildjian brand. Just like previous generations of Zildjians, we're excited to know that one day we'll pick up the reins of this business. We look forward to carrying on Zildjian's heritage while carving out a new future. This is our commitment to making the finest symbols in the world.